Hi Art, I'm just about to do your quick pre-handover video for you just to show you some of the functions and features of your new car. As you can see the fuel cap is in the same place as the previous car and the release is also in the same place. I'm just going to show you this function here. So that's your rear parking camera. It's always advisable to give it a little bit of a wipe every now and again to keep it clean so you get a good view at the back. And in the boot as you can see are your mats. So come round to the driver's door. This little button on the door, this little black rubber button here, if I position myself like so, you can lock and unlock the car with that, but it will also retract the wing mirrors for you. So I've locked the car, I've unlocked the car, and they pop out. Of course you can still use the key, it will still do the same function. The black rubber button really is for convenience, so if the key is in your pocket and it's pouring down a rain, it just helps you to overcome that. Now, that button that retracts the mirrors is this one here. If it's left or right, it won't do it on the key. Okay, it's in its neutral position so it will. The reason why you get to move this is because if you're actually driving and you need to go for a width restriction, you can then retract them in, go through the other side, pop them back out again, and then neutralize it for when you want to lock the doors and retract them manually um, on the key. Left and right wing mirror, and then the joystick to show you how to move that. This is to lock all the windows, this is to lock the doors, and the driver of course can work all four windows. I'm just going to show you a couple of buttons down here. First of all, this one, this is traction control. Its default setting is on, meaning that if you pull away fast, you shouldn't be able to wheel spin the car. The reason why you've got an ability to deactivate that is because if you get caught in mud or snow, you may need to create some wheel spin, but you would then have to turn it off for that to happen. The one next to it, 12V bat reset. That's your 12 volt battery reset. What does that mean? If the car is ever flat, you get in the car, as long as the key is somewhere in the vehicle, you'll be able to press that button, because there's a 12 volt storage, a little reserve if you like, and then press the start engine button, and it will allow the vehicle to start. You don't use that on a day-to-day -day basis, that's not what it's for, it's just an emergency reserve if the car was flat. Above that you've got what's called the HUD, so that's your heads up display. Out the top of the screen here, above the steering wheel, uh, a little perspex screen pops up and it can help you with some further information but I'll come back to that in a moment. What you've also got is parking sensors off and in bulb display. I'm just going to pop myself in the car to show you one or two more items. So again with all automatics you must put your foot on the brake, press the start button, car comes on. Every time of course we're looking for this little green symbol here which is, if my finger's in the way, there we go, you can see, that means the car is on. Even if you can't hear the engine, the car is on. Right. On the left-hand stalk here, down for left, up for right, flashers and full beam. This car has automatic headlights. Most people would turn it there and leave it there, and that would also be my advice too. On the right-hand stalk, it's all about the wipers, so down once is a quick swipe. Up once is intermittent. You can then alter the speed between each wiper with this little chap here. You go up again for your first series of wipes, constant, and then top speed. All the way down to the bottom, let go, and that's reset. If you want water on the front of the screen, you flash it towards you. Water on the rear screen, you push the whole thing away from you. You've also got an intermittent setting for rear wiper and a constant rear wiper. Okay, so all the way back to the front. I did mention heads-up display, and it is up, but the camera won't pick up Oh, actually, I think I can see something on there. It's very, very difficult to see at the angle of, of which the camera shows. But on there, you can have as much or as little information as you would like. So it would be things like the speed the car's doing, the speed of the road you're on. You can also have information with reference to your sat-nav as well. Now, the reason for that, of course, is just to stop you having to keep looking down there or across there. You can just keep your eye line going. I really like this function, but it's of a night time is when I would use it. To get it to retract down, you simply just push the button. It goes down. Now, it is dependent on your own driving seat and position. So where you need to see that, I'm going to pop it back up again. Where you would need to have that position is probably different from where, where the other husband would have it. So for instance, what I mean by that, if I turn the radio on, the media unit on, and then press setup. It's gonna give me a whole host of information on here, okay? And what we really wanna look for is things like vehicle. And then you can see it here, it says heads up display. But this scrolls up and down. But on heads up display, we press that, 
And that's the kind of thing that you would be able to see on that screen, as much or as little information on there as you can. So if sat nav was on, it's telling you where to go, speed of the road, speed you're doing, there's a car coming on the inside or outside, and you can also set your speed limiter on there as well on your cruise control. And it's very, very easy. And how you do that, you just simply press display contact, and you can put down as much, and you can rotate it, display height, so it sits in your eye line, you can twist it, and you can change the brightness as well. We're going to go back to the main screen. Now, just whilst we're on the radio, I'm going to very, very quickly show you what you've got here. So how to set up a phone. There we go. Phone. Press OK. As long as you've got your phone in you uh, with you, your smartphone, you would have to search for Kona, of course. When the two find each other, you would simply press pair. A code would appear on here. Same on your phone. And then you simply press download. Uh, or, or, or download phone book or recent call history and then that's all in the phone uh, and all in the car system there and then it works just the same as the previous car and probably previous cars before that satellite navigation couldn't be any simpler we just simply press sat nav here we're going to go search we pop in using these buttons here a postcode and then you simply press start and it will find where you want to go and it will direct you from there. These are all very, very easy things to do, but you do have to find them. This little arrow is, of course, your back button. And then this one here is your home screen. So to go to radio, we go on to radio. We're going to get that right the way there because we can have split screen. So quite simply on radio, we've got functions where we can search here. But if we touch on the actual radio itself, you can then preset your stations down here. Now we've got a Catholic voice in your home. So that's a nice calming one, but here we go. And we can just scroll through those and find the ones we want. We've got DAB various entities here and AM as well. And it's pretty straightforward. Again, it's just a case of playing with it and finding what's good for yourself. I'm gonna turn that off for the moment. Down here, you've got your climate control. So you turn that little dial and as you can see that number's changing. And then same with the speeds of the fan, like so. Various buttons along here, okay, and that's all to do with ventilation. And then down here is to do with heated and cooling seats. So this is heated seat, three settings, two settings, one, off. Cooling seats goes blue, three, two, one, off. This one's a very interesting one. This is a, this is a rear camera. You can actually be driving forwards and if you get someone come up behind you and they're really up close and you think, what's he playing at? You can press that button and it will then put the camera on. It will automatically do that when you put it in reverse, but you can actually do this whilst you're driving. Okay, press it again, it goes off. Heating and cooling seats for the driver, heated steering wheel for the driver. Couldn't be any simpler than that. Handbrake, you've got two parts to the handbrake. So you've got the actual handbrake itself, on and off, but you've also got auto hold. Now auto hold really becomes like the handbrake during your journey. So if you use auto hold, it will come up on the screen, which is just down about here. I don't know if you can see that. And then what it means is every time you come to a stop and apply the brakes, it will automatically apply the handbrake. When you lift off the brake to press the accelerator, it will automatically lift off the auto hold. So in the set essence, this one really becomes useful at the end of the journey when you're parking up to go home or, or, or wherever you're gonna go, you can then use the main handbrake to lock that off. But this is very, very good for in journey, okay? So that's really about it. You've got a very important button up here that I'm just gonna highlight, which if I can get it in the right pot spot, which is SOS button. Now that is a very, very good button, SOS. It's basically, if you was to set up on your on your system, your Blue Link services, which if I can find it, uh, Hyundai Blue Link, which is here, it means that Hyundai have your phone number, and God forbid, but if you ever was involved in an accident and it deployed the airbags through the SOS system, that would pinpoint your location and Hyundai would be able to inform the emergency services that you've had an accident and where you are because it finds you through your phone. You can actually press this button as well yourself because it's an, it is literally an emergency SOS, but it's not for games, it's not for fun. You can actually get through to people to talk to if you're being uh, harassed or stalked or, or, or just generally in danger. It's, it's not to order a, a, a meal or anything like that. It is a serious button to press. But other than that, there are a lot more things going on on the car. All will be in the manuals. It's a lovely car. There's loads to learn. The screen here, can, you can learn as much or as little as you want. It is simply just a case of pressing the the buttons to find out what functions and features you can literally go through there's maps of the areas 
There's of course the navigation, there's the phone, there's phone projection, so you can set up Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. I mean, there is lots and lots of different things that you can do on there, but it would be a case of just getting used to it and finding it. So that's a very quick and simple uh, pre-handover video. Hopefully this helps you get on your way. Thank you very much and bye for now.